better dressed for, uh, for, for occasions, but I think I've taken it to a whole new level. So <laughs> uh, thank you all so much for having me with you today. Um, I am in awe of all of your work. And this platform that we're using just drives home something that I have long thought, that when the work is as hard as this, it's so important to find the joy and the connection. Um, so before I came into government, I spent almost two decades fighting alongside workers. I got to do this with the phenomenal Betty Hung, who is here today, who I met when she was still a law student. And uh, she reminds me every day that when we do this work, we also get to meet and share our lives with the very best people. Um, we fought alongside workers for wages, better working conditions, corporate responsibility, but cases brought by exploited workers, the marginalized and the underdogs are not just about getting back pay or ending sweatshop conditions or extending liabilities to big corporations. They're really about asserting the full worth of every human being about reimagining what is possible. Um, there are, um, there, there are ways like, you know, these, the, the cases and, and, and the, the, the actions uh, and the campaigns are really ways to reject the message that our society too often tells unemployed, underemployed and working people, especially immigrants and workers of color, that they should just put their heads down and know their place. Uh, as has already been said, we are coming off the worst year in recent memory, and many have experienced deep pain and loss. The pandemic hit already vulnerable communities the hardest. Maurice said this already, including African-Americans, Latinx, Pacific Islanders, women, the elderly, and low-wage workers, especially women of color. Businesses closed, in some cases whole industries closed, and workers have paid the price, both on the front lines and in the unemployment lines. In California, between the last week in February and just two weeks later of 2020, unemployment insurance claims jumped 1,400%. Uh, more claims were filed by mid-April of 2020 than in all of 2019. And as devastating as these aggregate numbers are, they still hide the real story. An astounding 85% of African-American workers in California filed for unemployment. And that's compared to 45% for the state as a whole. Do we need any more evidence? Of course, there is other evidence, but just based on that, that precarious work and the broken unemployment system are both signs of and causes of systemic racism. We also know that before the pandemic, even people who were employed were not enjoying the quality of jobs, livable wages, health benefits, job security, union protections, upward mobility, and other aspects of a job that we want for ourselves and for our loved ones and for all workers. Even before the pandemic, when California's economy was at its most robust, one in three workers in the state was making less than $15 an hour. And 20% of those individuals had a college degree. African-Americans, Latinx workers, and Pacific Islanders were disproportionately represented in these low-wage jobs. Put another way, too few people have good jobs, and our jobs are exacerbating racial inequality. We can do better. I will also say that, as is often the case, California's story really represents uh, and is often uh, better than uh, the stories that we could tell about the rest of the nation. Um, so it gives you a, just a sense of, of, of the circumstances that we are in. A lot of attention has been rightly focused on how poorly the unemployment insurance system functioned during this pandemic. But there are at least three things that have not received enough attention. One, a lot has been made about the poor technology that states had to rely on to process massive numbers of UI claims. But all the technology in the world is not going to fix a system that is designed to be as restrictive as possible, where eligibility requirements are exceedingly complex. Again, they're designed to keep people out rather than support them during hard times. And these requirements are extremely punitive when someone doesn't understand every single requirement. 
This is not a tech problem. It's a program design problem, and we need to redesign it. Other solutions that we talk about, including technology, we do need to modernize. We do need language access so that all workers can understand the exceedingly complicated forms and explanations, but we need to fundamentally reimagine the unemployment insurance system so UI actually makes things better during hard times. Two, is during the pandemic, a big part of the strain on the entire system was the need to stand up new unemployment benefits programs that had never existed before. While we in government were so busy figuring out how to do this, it distracted us from the real issue, which is the inadequate safety net to begin with. If the UI system is supposed to help in times of crisis, but during those times, millions of people are by definition not included in the system, so we need to set up whole new programs just so people can survive, what does that say about our safety net? It says that it has too many holes. And three, the connection between unemployment and good jobs. This is related to the dominant idea that is driving a lot of policy discussions right now, that high unemployment benefits hurt employers and recovery because people won't go back to work. This argument has long been the basis of harmful policies affecting the unemployed, and we need to recenter the discussion on good jobs. The way to address the many barriers to a secure life that unemployed individuals face is not to cut benefits, but to improve jobs. So let's work together to reimagine what is possible. I know that UWU is on it, and I do believe that we have a moment like no other. With the incredible team at UWU that I've already met, and I cannot wait to get to know you all better, and with Nadi's leadership, I'm hopeful about where we can go. I know this because I got to see Nadi's work in California. I met her when she was really a baby. She was probably 20 years old. I think younger than 20. She has that rare ability to combine great vision, imagine what is possible, something totally different than the status quo, with extraordinary skill in translating that vision into reality through policy, community organizing, advocacy, and sustained movement building. This is how she conceived of the idea of DACA and helped to lead the campaign to make it real. It's how she helped build the community Labor Environmental Action Network, or CLEAN Car Wash Campaign, how she has transformed the way the AFL-CIO and unions work with worker centers, and how they combat racism. She builds on and lifts up the leadership, strengths, and excellence of directly impacted people with lived experience to build collective power and to advance social justice. It's these investments over time that will have broad transformative effects across the country. Nadi's work, along with the incredible team at UWU, who finds and spreads joy despite all the pain, this work is about building a world that values the full worth of every human being, where no one is told to put their heads down and know their place. Or to put it differently, where Black women, women of color, workers of color know that their place is at the tables where decisions are made and at the front of the movement for a more just world. I am so proud to be in this work with you, and thank you so much for having me here.